And I've had a lot of questions come in about how is the studio going? How's the move going? Uh, particularly how I've lit this, this YouTube shot I'm doing, this new shot and how I've sort of set it up and, and made it look the way that I have. And I think that's super cool. And I feel like because I've sort of shared some of my personal story in that recent video, that people are feeling a bit more connected to the channel and like they know me a bit better and a bit more invested in what I'm doing. And I really appreciate that. And it's kind of just a nice way to do YouTube when you sort of all of a sudden have a sort of more real connection with your viewers, even though it's, I suppose it's just YouTube. But so I thought I'd just sit down and I'd just share uh, particularly this lighting setup, how I've set this shot up, how I came to make this shot. I really struggle to set it up. And also there is one major flaw with this shot, which I was going to try to fix before I made this video. But then I thought, actually, it'd probably be more interesting when you saw what was wrong with the shot. And we talk about how I might fix it because you may or may not have picked up on it. I suspect I have, but, but maybe most of viewers have it. But anyways, we'll go, we'll go through all that. To start with, if we just look at this shot, it, it really isn't the most interesting space that I'm using here. And I think most of the interest is made by the composition and the lighting. I mean, those two things are, are just what completely makes this shot. And just to give you an example of what it looks like without the lighting, I'm gonna go turn off all of my YouTube lighting or all of my dedicated video lighting, and I'm gonna just open the blinds and I'm gonna turn on the room lights and you're gonna see what this shot looks like with just the normal available light. So this is the same shot without any of my video lights on and I've purely got sort of the blinds drawn. So we've got light coming in here from the outside and we've got the room lights on. And it doesn't look very good. And particularly what you'll see is my my face isn't sort of lit very well. And then the background kind of just looks a bit boring, boring and bland. We just don't have any sort of, sort of real contrast or, or color or pop. It's just kind of a boring shot. Now, I think the shot could be sort of usable in kind of a sort of a more natural looking sort of low contrast setup if we just turn on the key light. So now I'm going to turn on the key light and we're going to see what this shot looks like with just the single key light on. And I think it will be usable, but you'll see it's just not sort of nearly as nice or as interesting as when I've got everything lit and controlled just the way I want. Now we've added the key light and you can see what a difference that has made that has really lit up my face. It sort of makes the video look a lot nicer, a lot more professional. I think you could completely use this and it would be fine and it would be a very, very natural look, but I don't think it's nearly as interesting because what we're doing with all the other lights is basically we're turning off the room lights, we're shutting the blinds. So we're taking everything to almost a black state and then we're painting the way the room looks and the objects look in the room with light. So photography and video is really just a matter of painting with light and deciding where that light is going to be to make any sort of shot interesting. And this can be natural light or artificial light. It can be even sort of moving your subject. So at natural light is hitting them in a certain way. So if you're thinking about the way an image looks, whether it be photo or video, you really have to think about the light and painting with light. And that's the way I achieved this shot. So now we're going to go back to the fully lit shot. Now we're back to the fully lit shot. I'm going to take you through all the different lights I'm using to achieve this look and achieve this shot. I'm also going to tell you the big flaw with this shot. But while I'm going through these lights, I want you to have a look at that door behind me where the light is coming from that door. And I want you to think about what you think is behind that door. Where does that door go? Because that door and the light coming from that door is my favorite part of this shot. And I actually got the idea from a creator named Mark Bone, who's a documentary filmmaker, who I watched one of his videos one day and he was having trouble getting sort of an interesting shot. And he actually had a door in the background. He just put a light in the door and he just made the shot more interesting. But have a think about what is your brain thinking? Where does that door go? What is behind that door? And then I'm going to sort of reveal at the end of the sort of lighting tour here. Now, the first thing we want to talk about is the key light. And that is kind of the most important light in the whole thing because it lights your main subject. And when you're building up your lighting setup, the first thing you do is you set up your key light and you set your exposure completely around that key light and your subject. So you get the skin and everything, the brightness, you get everything on your subject looking the way you want and then you go through and set up all the other lights around it. They get built off that first key light. That's going to make setting up the lighting much, much easier if you just start with that key light. And uh, in a little bit, I'll talk about this key light because 
This is one of the best key lights, if not the best key light I've ever used, and it's by a company called Small Rig. They sent it out to me some time ago, and I haven't had time to talk about it on the channel strictly because it is such a big light and it came with these huge soft boxes, and I didn't really have a space to use it, but now I do, and I am super, super happy with it. It's a pretty cool light. Now we've got the key light, and the next most important light, I think, is the background light. Now, I don't need a whole lot of background light in this shot because the key light is such a huge soft box that it is sort of spilling back and it is lighting up the background to an extent, almost as much as I want, but I just needed a little bit more brightness back there to kind of make it look a little bit more natural and just give it a little bit more pop. And so I've got this tiny little light here. It's only on 5%. The other thing that that light is doing is just creating a little bit of shadows around the leaves on the plant there. So that's just adding a little bit of interest to this part of the frame. And when I initially set this shot up, this part of the frame just seemed sort of vacant and bare and the, and the shot just was not very well balanced. So we brought in that plant and then we sort of added this background light and that lit up the plant and left some little sort of uh, leave shadows on the walls and just made the shot sort of way, way more interesting. So uh, that was an important part of getting the shot looking good. Now, the next light we've got would be called a hair light or a rim light, and that is actually right over my head. Now, importantly, it's over my head, but behind me a bit. And what that is doing is that is giving me that little bit of shine on my head, and it's giving me a slight outline on my shoulders around my shirt. What that's doing in a very subtle way is just creating a bit of pop that gets me off the background. So if you're if you're composing a video or composing sort of YouTube shot and you just feel like you and the background are blending together and there's just something missing, like there's just no pop, then there's a good chance that it is that hair or rim light that other people are using that you aren't. It doesn't have to be boomed straight overhead like I'm using. You can use it to the side just on the top of a cheap light stand and just sort of point it down at you. But since I had the equipment to do this and I wanted to get kind of an even light like this, I just thought I would and it looks pretty cool and I'm happy with it. So anyways, that is the rim or hair light. Now the next one that is quite subtle but actually makes a huge difference is I've got two light tubes behind this monitor. Now, originally I didn't have this, and this side of the frame just looked quite boring. Then I tried putting some light tubes and putting some sort of natural color in there, because I really wanted this shot to be a fairly natural shot, like not super RGB, like sort of gaming type looking shot. But what I found is it was just sort of a little bit boring. So I went with this sort of blue color that, that I'm hoping kind of looks like it's radiating from the monitor itself, as if this is a color that is kind of motivated by the screen or the monitor, and it's just sort of floating up onto the wall and, and sort of under the monitor. And I don't think it looks too sort of crazy RGB video gamey, and uh, I'm really happy with it, and it is a really important part of making this shot interesting. The other light that really isn't doing anything in this shot, but since I talk about products a lot, I needed a light just to light up sort of the front of the product. So when I'm talking and I've got the thing on the table that the front of the product actually has a bit of light on it and it's not in complete shadow. So I have a very small light at very, very low level. And all it's doing is just pointing at the front edge of this white table and it's just bouncing a little bit of light onto the actual product itself. So you can just see the product in my low camera angle, which I'm not shooting right now, but I generally do. Now, my favorite part of this whole shot is that door and the light from behind that door. And what I've got is I've got a high powered sort of wand light or tube light in there. It's a hundred watt. I've got it at full power. I've got it at 4,000 Kelvin. And it's actually just creating that sort of light coming from the edge of the door. And I really didn't know how to deal with a door in the shot. And when I had it shut, it just, it just did not look good. But then when I put the light in there and slightly opened the door, I just felt it looked sort of interesting or alluring. Like you would think, what's down there? If I open that, it's going to be a long hallway to something or to the equipment room or what. I just think it adds sort of a lot of interest to the shot. And I actually got the idea by a creator named Mark Bone, who does talk a fair bit about lighting in his videos. And he's a documentary filmmaker. He's actually got a, an online documentary filmmaking class or school that you can sign up for. Uh, and if you, if you haven't seen him, his videos and his content are sort of unbelievable. And he was just shooting a video one day 
and mentioned he was having trouble getting his shot to look good, and he just threw a colored light behind a door and just left the door open a crack, and it transformed the shot, and I felt it kind of did the same thing for my shot. So that's how I ended up with that setup. Now, what is behind the door? Do you think it's a gear closet, or does it go outside, or does it go down a sort of a long, light-filled hallway? Is it a balcony? It's actually a bathroom, but I think when you look at this shot, just putting a light in the shot doesn't make you think that in the background you're looking at a bathroom door. It just looks like something more interesting than that. So that's how light can just totally transform the way you feel about just a doorway, a simple doorway. So if you want your YouTube video to look good, it's almost always about the lighting. It's almost never about the camera. It's almost always about the lighting. And if you, you want a better look in a YouTube studio shot like this, don't buy a new camera, buy some lighting gear. Now I said there was one problem with the lighting for my videos and it's something you might not have noticed, but I definitely noticed because I have to edit all my videos. And when you are lighting a person's face, you ideally want the light from coming from up above them, and you want a situation where that light creates a nice shadow along their jawline. That helps outline their face, and it actually makes it so it covers up any sort of sort of double chin or sort of less flattering, I don't know, skin or what have you under the chin. If you look at all of my previous videos, I don't really look like I have any sort of double chin. If you look at my recent videos, all of a sudden, I have a double chin. Now, do I have a double chin? Is it the lighting? I'm not sure, it's probably both. But what's actually happening is this giant key light is coming down. It is actually lighting my face exactly the way it should, but I now have a white desk in front of me instead of my small timber top desk that I had before. And the light is bouncing off the desk and going under my chin. This is lighting up under my chin. I'm also shooting with a wide angle lens, and when you're shooting with a wide angle lens, you have to have it a little bit lower, because if you have it a little bit higher and tilt it down, it actually changes the proportions where your head gets really big, and by the time you get to your body, it seems really small, so it looks a bit odd. So actually to frame with a wide angle lens in a video like this, you have to sort of put it down a little bit, so it's actually below my chin level. So the camera is actually looking up under the chin. And the way I figured out that it, it was the desk that was sort of causing this lighting problem is I theorized that was the issue. And I went and got this black cloth from the other room and I put it on the table here. And what you'll find is this has now given me that hard chin outline that we want. And it's minimized any sort of double chin look. And all I've done is just block out the white reflective table and now the shot looks the way it should. Now, I think there's a couple ways I can deal with this. One, I can change the color of the desk, maybe go with a gray desk or a darker desk, but I am shooting with black lenses on the desk and the white and the black was actually looking kind of good together, but I could probably go with a gray and that would be an okay middle ground. The other thing that I can try doing is positioning the softbox so it is lighting my face, but it's coming through at an angle where not a, light, a lot of light is hitting the desk. And I don't really need a whole lot of light because I said early in the video, I have that sort of little light that actually lights up the products for me. So I think I might be able to achieve that and keep the white desk. And that's sort of what I'm, what I'm hoping to do. Um, if I left it the way it was, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but it really isn't the way that you would want to light someone's face. You don't want to light up from under the chin. Now, I just wanted to come back to my key light because that is kind of the star of the show. That is the sort of the main thing that's lighting me. And it's the, certainly my favorite part of this new lighting setup. Now, I'm using 120 centimeter softbox. This is a very big soft light that creates a very flattering light on my face as long as the light's not bouncing off this desk and lighting up the underneath of my chin. The other thing about this light is it's very, very color accurate. And because of that, skin tones look good, any products I've got in the shot look good, and having a color accurate light just means that the colors that you're actually bringing into the scene, particularly skin tones, are going to look natural and normal. And if you ever find yourself in a situation where everything you're shooting outside looks really good and natural and you're loving the colors you're getting out of your camera, and then you get inside and it just doesn't look right and skin tones don't look right and people don't look right. It's two different things that are happening there. One, you're probably getting what's called your white balance right, which is the way you tell your camera to interpret those colors. But the other thing is the quality of the light that's actually hitting the subject in the skin tones 
probably isn't very good. And what happens is a light that isn't accurate will actually, instead of it being a true white light where it sends like the whole spectrum of color and then the skin just reflects the colors that are actually in the skin, it might have too much blue or too much red or, or too little blue or too little red. And then you get these very weird, blotchy or unnatural skin tones. So often if you're getting poor color out of your camera, it's actually not the camera. It's actually the color of the light. So I've been super happy with the skin tones coming out of this light. I think it looks great. The other thing that's nice about this light is it comes with a carrying case. So it's got the small little carrying case where you can carry this 350 watt light in. The, at 350 watts, it's super, super bright. So if you find yourself in a situation where you need more light, you've got it, but you can also dial it down. I think for this shot, I'm only using it at sort of like 11%. But when we were actually painting this apartment, we needed a huge light to cover the entire apartment so we could see what we're doing at night because we had no light coming from outside and the sort of the room lights are just so dim that they just, we couldn't even tell what would paint it and what we hadn't. So we actually put the lantern on this 350 watt light. We turned it up to full power and we ran it that way for practically days on end for the better part of a week and it didn't skip a beat, it didn't overheat, the fan didn't make any noise, the thing was just absolutely bulletproof, and the entire room was lit up, and it was just a sort of a really good setup. It's probably the world's most expensive work light, because you probably don't need <laughs> a color accurate light for a work light, but it performs, you can see that it can perform if you're just having it on all day, even if you're sort of using it to sort of light your space, what have you, outside of making the videos. The other thing I like about it that I hadn't seen on a light before is it actually has the tilt adjustment so you can aim which way the light is going. Generally lights that I've used before, when you loosen them, the light will just fall. There's there's no dampening in it. This thing, I've got this huge softbox on it and if I loosen it off, it just slowly, slowly comes down. So it won't crash forward, it won't break the light, it won't cause sort of that momentum that'll knock the whole thing over and Honestly, I'd never seen that in a light before. Maybe the more expensive lights have that. Maybe this is the first time I've used a light of this quality. But yeah, I really love the way that sort of soft movement or sort of dampening of the adjustable tilt mechanism worked. And the other thing I'd say is the fans in the thing are dead quiet, which is super important for video. You just don't hear an absolute thing out of them. I mean, they're as quiet as like a 30 or 40 watt light. In fact, actually, I would say that my Mac studio is louder. The, my, the external hard drives I have for backup are louder. So you're not gonna get any sound coming into the microphone when using this light. Now my verdict is on this light, is it a great light? And it is a budget light for sort of the power that it has. But if you're making sort of YouTube videos and you're in a small space and you don't need that level of light, Small Rig also has some less expensive options that are as good as many of the big boys like sort of Aperture and Godox. And I'll link some of those lights in the description down below and you can have a look through there. You can certainly get away with a lower powered light if you're in a situation where you don't need that 350 watts. Now I was gonna give you a studio tour as well, but this video has already gone on way too long and the studio is a complete mess. It's just stuff thrown everywhere anyway. So maybe in about two weeks time, I'll have it tuned in enough and I'll sort of give you a tour of everything. I'll have some B-roll stations set up. So just stay tuned to the channel and watch for that video if you want that sort of updated tour studio setup.